let me start off by offering you all a humble apology. Apparently, my audio was crap yesterday. Uh, I was reading the comments. I didn't think much of it, actually. But the first comment, well, well, not the first comment. It was a comment that said, oh, Gonzo, your audio is bad. You know, I just let you know. I thought, yeah, probably your, probably your headphones, mate. Nothing wrong with my bloody audio. By the time I got to six or seven comments down, I thought, OK, it's clearly a problem with my audio. My fault. Not your fault. My fault, definitely. Apologies. Hopefully I've sorted it out. I've, I've probably gone too far the other way. Give it a big old two. So uh, I think my microphone's there. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Of course I'm here. You can see me. Hopefully you can uh, hear me now. My error in post-production makes it sound more fancy than it is just editing a video. Uh, anyway, a little bit of transfer talk today. Not so much tittle-tattle. Juicy stuff. Juicy stuff, definitely. So, uh, looks like Luis Guillermo uh, flying over for a medical for West Ham. Thank you very much. Good night. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. No, no, no. Look, there's a bit more to it than that. Um... If you've not been following the story, it's been a funny one this week. So we had a few days ago the suggestion that Guilherme wasn't coming to West Ham anymore. Uh, the first negative story was that Saudi clubs had come in, he was signing for them. I think then we were going to get, um, possibly Chelsea were, were coming in to, to take over the deal. But there was that was just slightly confused because they're actually signing somebody else from the same um, club, uh, Palmeiras. And the other one was that, uh, well, it was it was twofold that David Sullivan had come in at the last minute, minute and said to Tim Stuyton, oh, you're not signing him, despite the fact that Tim Stuyton's been over there, oh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, collecting his air miles from the UK back to Brazil and actually had been sent over there uh, by Sullivan. That Somehow Sullivan had said, no, no, you don't. I'm not. I'm not signing off on that check. Uh, the club really pushed back on it. said, that, that's not the case at all. Uh, Stuyton's got the full backing of the club. And then there was some other reports came out said, the club are going to sack Stuyton. It was all weird. It was like a day's worth of negative West Ham press. And a few of you said in the comments the other day, maybe it's just some residual stuff from, we took a bit of a hammer in last month with Moyes in charge, didn't we? West Ham fans, the club as a whole. So I think a lot of us suspected because Moyes got so many friends in the media. There's just so many negative stories about everybody. So maybe it was a bit of that. It turned out not to be true. Uh, West Ham remained hopeful of sealing the deal for Guilherme. And uh, it looks like he's possibly flying over uh, in the jet with Tim Stuyton, hopefully. Get a nice picture at some point. Seems good. So, um, well, well done. I, whilst I'm, you know, a little bit reluctant, not reluctant, but I just don't know about the player. I'm, I'm still a West Ham fan. I, I want us to sign a good player. I want us to, want him to be good. And it would be, even though I, I think even, even though I, I've got, I couldn't tell you anything about the player because I didn't know about him more than a few days ago. I think having put all this work in, it would be disappointed. Not so much just for the player himself, but for, for the whole project of going out to Brazil and, and sign players and identify them, you, you've got to... I want to see what he can do. I want to see what Styler can do now. So I hope we do sign this guy. I've watched more footage of him. Actually, I found the interesting footage with Guilherme is not, not the more recent stuff. So if you go onto YouTube, anything that's been up, uploaded about Luis Guilherme in the past two weeks, discount it. So a lot of them will say up there and it will say, Luis Guilherme, welcome to West Ham. All they're using is basically footage from... This see, they're all using the same footage. The moody music comes on, 30 seconds of moody music, some stats pop up on the screen. I mentioned this the other day, a few celebrations, then you get into the, the bits and pieces, the skills. The really interesting one is to watch him, I found, if you look at things that are more than a year old, because then you can actually see him playing youth team football as well and find him in some of the underage groups for Brazil. And I, I think that's, that's much better because you don't, it's almost like the footage hasn't been flowered up. It's not been, it's not. It's not had a fluffer used on it, quite frankly. And um, I, I just feel you get a bit bit better footage. So uh, that's good. Um, what's not, so, I'd say it's not so good, is uh, Fabrizio Bruno, Big Frank. Uh, it, it, we've known for a few days now that this one's off, but apparently West Ham have identified an alternative. Yes, you've guessed it. It's another Brazilian. I, I don't know what the fixation is, actually. Um, anyway, his name's Vitiao. I think his name's Vitiao. He is from Internacional. I was going to go and look and find it on the screen. I think I think I know enough to remember. It's from Internacional, 24 years of age. I've had a little look, so you don't have to. Um, he, it was a weird one, actually. So he originally was with uh, Internacional. Then he got sold to Shakhtar. And then Shakhtar loaned him back. Uh, basically, he played for Shakhtar for a bit. Shakhtar loaned him back to Internacional. So I think the transfer's not worked. You're looking at about 7 million quid. He looks okay. I mean, he looks okay. What he does look like is is more mobile than Big Frank, right? Um, because I've got to say, he, he, I'll tell you what, 
He, he might not have looked like Frank Bruno in terms of his stature and his physique. He was a tall guy for Blitzio Bruno, but I'll tell you what, he moved like Big Frank. Um, he was slow as hell. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> moved like a... He can run around the back line like a heavyweight boxer. Well, we, we've already got a few of those. Well, actually not Angelo Ogbonna. He's gone, isn't he? Um, bless him, Ogbonna. Good luck to him, by the way. What a servant. He, he's been for West Ham, by the way. Um, I felt we needed someone mobile in the back line. Anyway, so it looks like this Viti Vitiao is going to be a, uh, a real contender, somebody that we might be interested in getting. Uh, he, to be fair, he just looks like a defender. I'd like to sit here and tell you that there's spectacular stuff um, in his highlight reel. There's not really. He looks comfortable enough on the ball, but, you know, not exceptional. But what do you expect? I mean, seven million quid, you're not expecting exceptional. I'd be amazed if we signed him and he was starting in the first team for West Ham. I really would. But I, I don't think... I don't think he's useless. I'm not suggesting that. Um, looks looks okay, that, that's for sure. But I would imagine if West Ham are actually going to sign uh, two central defenders, then there's probably one one budget player in, in someone like like Vitiao and then one humdinger in, in somebody else. I don't know. As, as I mentioned the other day, I think the Max Kilman stuff's getting a little bit pricey, uh, quite frankly. So, yeah, that, that's that's an interesting one there. Um, and, and what I would say about Guilherme and all of this stuff, it's all, all the big hitters are talking about it. You know, um, uh, the Athletic are reporting it. Um, Fabrizio Romano's reporting it as well. So, yeah, it looks like it's highly likely to happen. Just one other little bit of news which I thought was really, really important was actually Ben Johnson. Uh, it's not over. It, I, I did suspect that this might happen. I wondered. I, I, as the season drew on, I, I got less and less confident. But I did worry all along. And you, you'll notice if you're a regular watcher of the channel, if the problem all the time with Ben Johnson was David Moyes. I've, I've always suspected he would take a reasonable wage as long as he could get some football. And so now, now that the club have confirmed that they confirmed late last night uh, or late tonight. <laughs> as it is for me. I'm basically, I'm recording this early because I'm going, I'm going to see Gio tomorrow in London. We're going out for a, for a lunch, me in, um, in London for lunch tomorrow. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, certainly what's been going on with Ben Johnson there because the, the club have let it be known that he is, they are, they continue in talks with him. So it's not, it's not over. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. And... Um, that the manager likes him, or the head coach. I've got to get into that habit, call him a head coach. Uh, Julian Lopetegui likes Ben Johnson. Not surprised. I, I'm not surprised. I, that, that, that's, yeah, that, that's all I would say about it. When I, look, he is very uh, fullback heavy, very fullback based, isn't he? Um, and what we've, what's happened with Aaron Cresswell, who signed the year extension as well, which I um, discussed in a separate video over on Patreon. And... Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think Ben Johnson fits the mould. I would, I would expect to see Ben Johnson start ahead of Vladimir Souffal for Lopetegui, unless we were going to bring in another right back. And I, I'm not sure we are. There's just been no, been no chit chat. Has there been no gossip? No gossip at all about that. We've lots of centre forward stuff. Lots, lots of wingers. Um, plenty of centre backs. And and funny enough, that is exactly what the club said. Those positions are exactly what the club said. So. Um, you know, maybe we're not to expect fullbacks if we can get it sorted out in house. It sort of makes sense as well, doesn't it? I guess if we spent a lot of time worrying about this homegrown quota and homegrown players cost a lot more, if the club sort of ensure that, that Flynn Downs is back, that Cresswell signed, that um, that Ben Johnson's on the books, it does sort of immediately sort out a large part of the problem, really, doesn't it? So, anyway, there you go. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry, just to point you in the direction of uh, a patron, if I may, if I may be so cheeky. It's our third Hammers Chat channel. What a great way for you guys to help support Hammers Chat and allows us to upload two videos, one a day, on each channel, sometimes more when juicy things happen, by the way. Um, we do, we're, we're very, very privileged and very happy and absolutely delighted to be doing this as our job, myself and Gio. And the only way we can do it is by you watching those bloody annoying adverts. I do apologise, by the way, for our fine sponsors like ETC Sport and Manscaped and Match Bingo and all, all these wonderful sponsors. Um, in particular, I've got to say ETC Sport have been with us for a long, long time. But also our, our wonderful, loyal and lovely patrons. Uh, it's, it's our third Hammers Chat channel. We do a lot of... We're, we're probably a little... 
we probably let ourselves go a little bit more over that. When I say let ourselves go, I don't mean we rock up in our dressing gowns with our hair unbrushed or anything like that. Um, it's, it's probably a little bit more free and breezy over there. Anyway, links in the description below, patreon.com forward slash hammers chat. Loads of extra content, discounts of everything, competitions, all that brilliant stuff. Um, and we've got a seven day free trial as well, so go and check that out if you want. Anyway, so there you go. A Louis Guilherme, it looks like he's flying over. Um, in the, in the chartered private jet with Tim Steiton. Hopefully, Bruno's off. Vitiel possibly in. Ben Johnson possibly remaining.